Welcome to this rapid revision video, again looking at individual genius in the Renaissance. This time we'll be looking at William Harvey and his major breakthrough, the discovery that the blood circulates within the body. William Harvey was born in 1578 and lived until 1657. Harvey was an English doctor. He was also the personal physician to both James I and Charles I. Both kings of England encouraged his scientific investigations. Like Vesalius before him, he was trained at Padua University, only somewhat later. Harvey was able to demonstrate and prove the circulation of the blood. This went against Galen's theory that the liver made blood, which was then used up like a fuel in the muscles. Also like Vesalius, he taught about anatomy. He dissected animals and carried out experiments to prove his ideas. For example, he dissected live frogs. Frogs, when cold, have a very slow heartbeat, which allowed Harvey to clearly see the circulation of the blood and demonstrate it to others. He also showed that blood could only flow in one direction because of valves in the blood vessels. He had proved Galen wrong. In 1628, he was able to publish an anatomical account of the motion of the heart and blood in animals. In this book, he proved that the heart acted like a pump and was responsible for recirculating the blood around the body. Printing allowed the book to be widely shared. Here's a diagram from the time which shows how Harvey demonstrated the valves within the blood, showing that blood only travelled in one direction. Firstly, a tourniquet was attached around the arm until the blood vessels stand proud, and Harvey saw that there were bumps on them. These were the valves, and he theorised a way of showing how they worked. He or an assistant would run his finger along the, uh, the blood vessel, pushing the blood beyond one of the valves. It wouldn't re-flood again because of the tourniquet uh, preventing the blood going into the arm. And so it showed that in fact, the blood only had flowed in one direction along the valves and could not therefore flow backwards through it. He also demonstrated this using rods and similar whilst uh, demonstrating with dissected corpses and dissected animals. Another thing was that Harvey was able to demonstrate that it was impossible for the blood to, uh, to, to be used up like a fuel. He theorised that thousands of litres would need to be pumped every single day and burnt up like a fuel, and people simply weren't consuming that amount of liquids or food in order to sustain it. And so his idea that blood was essentially recirculated made more sense than Galen's theory. So like we did with some of the other individuals, let's consider what his discoveries and achievements were, how he used scientific methods to achieve them, any other factors that helped him, and his importance in the overall history of medicine. Harvey became the personal doctor to James I and Charles I. Harvey's most famous work was the circulation of the blood. He proved that Galen's idea that blood was pumped by the heart, but used up like a fuel, with the liver making more blood, was wrong. He published an anatomical account of the motion of the heart and blood in animals to share his idea. Harvey's education at Padua University and his patronage by two kings of England encouraged his scientific approach. Harvey used vivisection, this means dissecting living animals, on frogs to demonstrate blood circulation. He also used experiments to show how valves in blood vessels worked. Printing helped him to achieve this. Harvey's book was printed and widely shared. But the government also helped. King James I and King Charles I both encouraged and helped fund Harvey's research. Also, the fact that he was trusted by these kings provided him with a certain amount of kudos and people were more likely to listen to him. But let's not forget Harvey's individual genius. Harvey would have been familiar with Vesalius's work, having trained at the same university only a few years later, and he would have built on it, built on it with his own ideas about how the body worked, but particularly the blood. So what's his importance in the history of medicine? He's quite important, really. Harvey improved understanding of anatomy, the structure of the body, but also physiology, how the body works. His ideas about blood and circulation were correct, and he proved this. However, none of this new knowledge made people any healthier. One possible effect it did have, though, is people understanding that the blood was recirculated rather than being used up as a fuel showed that bloodletting was perhaps not the greatest idea. So after Harvey's ideas became more accepted, bloodletting as a treatment and a prevention really started to go out of use. Some final points then. William Harvey was educated at Padua University and was likely influenced by the early work of Andreas Vesalius. Harvey was the personal doctor of King James I and King Charles I, giving him, him and his ideas considerable influence and credibility. His most famous discovery demonstrated that Galen was wrong about the liver producing blood and it being used up like a fuel. 
Harvey demonstrated instead the circulation of the blood by way of the heart and lungs in one direction. He used experiments on dead animals and live animals and dissection to prove his work. He also used experiments on live frogs, which had a slow heartbeat, and live people to show valves in action. However, like Vesalius, his work had little immediate impact on the health and understanding of disease. His work would, though, help later developments like blood transfusions. And that's a brief summary of William Harvey's contributions to medicine. I hope it's been useful to you, and if it has, please drop this video a like and subscribe to the channel. But for now, I'll say thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.